The Woman in the Purple Skirt is a novel by Japanese author Natsuko Imamura, and it's translated into English by Lucy North. This is a novel that I had on my radar for quite a while, probably from sometime last year. At the beginning of the year, I featured it on a list of my most anticipated Japanese novels of the year. It had me intrigued by its very strange yet simple premise. I mentioned this in my previous video that highlighted my most anticipated books of June, that this book reminds me of that Tom Waits song, What's He Building? It's a book about paranoia, told from the perspective of the paranoid person. The Woman in the Purple Skirt tells the story of a woman in a purple skirt, but it is told from the perspective of another woman, and she is known as the Woman in the Yellow Cardigan. Not until the very end of the novel do we actually find anything out about our narrator character, even though it's her head that we're living in all the way through the book. So the book begins with our narrator character, the Woman in the Yellow Cardigan, admiring a woman in a purple skirt. She has a complete obsession with the woman in the purple skirt. She watches her, she knows her routine, and she has opinions about her. The woman in the purple skirt is just a woman. She lives in a neighborhood. Snowy, do you mind? She lives in a neighborhood and she often seems to go between jobs. The woman in the yellow cardigan, our narrator, has noticed that the woman in the purple skirt is often between jobs. She notices when she stays at home, she notices when she goes out routinely to a job, and she notices, you know, when she's fully employed, part-time employed, or unemployed. And so, right at the beginning of the novel, she invisibly guides the woman in the purple skirt towards a specific job, and it very early on and very quickly reveals that that job is at our narrator's workplace. The woman in the yellow cardigan, the woman whose eyes we see through, works at this hotel. And now the woman in the purple skirt is working at that same hotel, and here's where the novel really begins. Nothing really happens in the book. It's a very, very slow burn. Luckily, it's a very, very short book. It is about 170 pages, and those pages are quite sparse. If you think about how quickly you get through a 200-page book, you'll get through this one even quicker, because the writing is very simple. The sentences are short and snappy, the pages feel half empty. It's really sparse, and it just follows the woman in the purple skirt getting this job at a hotel, getting to know her colleagues, getting to know the job, and slowly moving through her new life at this job, all the while we're seeing it all through the eyes of the woman in the yellow cardigan, whom we know nothing about. It's very eerie living in the mind of a character that we don't know. And so the woman in the purple skirt is our main character, but our protagonist, our narrator, is an invisible person whose head we are trapped inside. And that creates this claustrophobic sense and even this sense of doubt because we have this potentially unreliable narrator and we can only take her word for it because we're looking through her eyes. The book is very much about paranoia and obsession. We don't really know why our narrator has an obsession with the woman in the purple skirt, but she does not just imply but outright state that a lot of people do. When the woman in the purple skirt gets the job at the hotel, she's very meek and she's very nervous and she can barely say her own name and introduce herself properly to her colleagues. And she does say at that point, this is my name and I'm also known in the neighborhood as the woman in the purple skirt. So she knows this about herself. This isn't a description that our narrator has put on her. It's what she's known as in the village. And in this area, you also get these school kids who often hang out with her. She has a bench that she loves to sit at and she has this routine of getting a pastry from the local bakery, sitting on this one bench and talking to the local kids who are all big fans of her. And as the book goes on, as she gets happier in her job and more comfortable in her new situation, she and the kids form a more positive relationship. Rather than them kind of annoying or antagonizing her, they've befriended her. And the woman in the yellow cardigan the whole time is invisibly watching her. They get the same bus to work, they work at the same place, and yet the woman in the purple skirt never acknowledges that our narrator even exists to the point that you start wondering, is there going to be a twist about her being dead, about her being a ghost, about them being the same person? And these questions keep buzzing around in your head all the way through the book that there must be some strange twist coming. And I will say that the ending, the, the final act of the book, it is pretty shocking and strange, but it's not shocking and strange in the way that I expected, which made it impossible to predict and therefore a lot more fun. Now, as I said, the book is both short 
and a slow burn when not a lot happens. And I think that balance works really well in its favour. If the book had been any longer, it might have been a bit annoying, but it is exactly the right length and exactly the right tone and atmosphere to keep you going through this pretty slow story. I didn't really have a problem with the fact that not a lot happens in it, because it's really about the mystery and the strangeness of this relationship between a stalker and the woman that she's stalking. And what's interesting is that our stalker, there's nothing dangerous in her motives. She's not aggressive. It, she's not a sexual predator. She's not anything. She just has an obsession. And she states outright at the beginning that all she really wants is to be friends with the woman in the purple skirt. She has decided that the woman in the purple skirt is worthy of her attention and she wants to be friends with her. Even though there is nothing particularly interesting about the woman in the purple skirt. This is about two anonymous people whose names we don't know, at least at the beginning, inextricably connected. Almost like there's this gravitational pull between them that one of them has decided on. It's pretty eerie in that regard. And that eeriness carries it through all the way. Now, Lucy North has done a really, really good job at translating the tone and atmosphere of this book. You really get that creepiness, that emotional weight of the, the paranoia, the obsession, even this kind of guilt that runs through our character. It's interesting, this impossible to describe emotional connection where it's wrong, it's unhealthy, and it's played straight. And I think that that's really interesting how it's carried through wordlessly. It is not described, it is not alluded to the fact that this obsession that our narrator has and the way she describes her actions and her behavior and her relationship to the woman in the purple skirt or lack thereof or hope for one, it's never really acknowledged that this is weird. We're left to believe that or come to that conclusion. And you kind of feel sorry for her in that regard and you start to question her motives and you also realize that you know nothing about your narrator outside of her obsession with this other person. In that regard, I have never read a book with this dynamic and this relationship relationship between narrator and protagonist. Because there are moments in the book, quite often, where you forget that our narrator is also a character in the story. She is not a typical third-person omniscient narrator. She's a character in the story, albeit a very invisible one. And that strange blend of first-person character and third-person narration is really strange. She's narrating the life of another person who really is the main character, and yet she is a character, and so she is not a third-person omniscient narrator. It's a strange relationship, and it's one that feeds the novel. It really keeps you invested in these characters just through its setup. And that setup doesn't get boring because, as I said, the book is just the right length. Now, as I said, Lucy North has done a great job with the translation. Her translation is really impeccable when it comes to the tone and the atmosphere and even the grammar structure. As I said, these are short and snappy sentences. She's very, very good at precisely directing the narrator and her relationship to the woman in the purple skirt. This is a really engaging story. The ending comes out of left field and is pretty dramatic, but it is believable given what we've been through so far and it makes it a really worthwhile journey because you know that some strange twist is going to come at the end. And I wouldn't call it a twist, I would just call it a raising of the stakes and a very dramatic turn of events, especially given how much of a slow burn it is until the last 20, 30 pages or so. But it's a wonderful premise and a very, very strange tale given the relationship that we have as readers with narrators and main characters. This flips the script on that dynamic and that relationship and makes it a really worthwhile read. And that claustrophobia, paranoia, obsession is a really unique circumstance. Also the fact that this is a story about stalking and obsession, but it's not a man stalking a woman. There is nothing sexual or predatory or aggressive or dangerous in it. And that makes it it very, very unique. I don't know if there's anything allegorical in here that I'm missing. Maybe there is. If you've read this, or if you're going to read this once you do read it, please let me know in the comments if you pick up any kind of metaphor or allegory that I might be missing, what this is uh, representative of on a cultural scale, or even if it's referencing other works of fiction. I'm not sure. I wonder if there's something bigger here that this represents that I'm not getting, so please let me know. Really, for me, this was just an interesting 
exploration of the relationship between people, especially strangers, especially strangers who live and work in a close-knit community, and also the relationship between protagonist, narrator, and reader. Fascinating stuff. Overall, I hugely recommend this, and it has been one of the highlights of Japanese literature of my year so far. The Woman in the Purple Skirt by Natsuko Imamura. Check it out, and subscribe for books.